your mother, your father, your grandparents, even you may be burdened with diabetes. Approximately five of you in this room already are. And by the time the majority of us reach our 70s, about 25 of you. But what is diabetes? You see, we need glucose in order to function. And we get that glucose from the food that we eat. And when we eat, our pancreas will secrete insulin in order to pull that glucose in for us to be able to use. And type 2 diabetics like myself and my mother, those little pancreatic cells that do all the work begin to shut down, leaving someone young like me at a five times greater chance of premature death. So it's a little bit more complex than, as my mother puts it, a sugar problem. <laughs> you see, type 2 diabetics are at increased risk for complications like diseases of the eye, of the brain, of the heart, of the kidneys, nerve damage, and even amputation. Now, we're all at some sort of risk for diabetes, whether it be our genetics, our ethnicity, our family history for the disease, or whether it be our lifestyle, our diet, our physical activity levels, our environment. Now, Canadian Aboriginals and immigrants experience these risks in greater magnitudes than any other population in Canada, each in their own unique way. Now, immigrants, for instance, have this healthy immigrant effect. When they arrive, they typically have better health upon arrival, and this begins to deteriorate over time, almost exponentially. The process of migration may lead to poor social and economic adjustment in country, which could lead to low socioeconomic status. And Aboriginals, for instance, they apparently have this genetic predisposition to diabetes and even obesity. In and of that, with some measurement error, they've been recorded as the highest overall race in Canada, women especially. Even more so, these women have the highest rates of diabetes during pregnancy, gestational diabetes, than any other women in Canada. So, I wanted to know who has the highest rates of diabetes and why. And what I thought was that Aboriginals were going to have the highest rates, no, hands down. What I found wasn't the case. Using the largest combined sample of the Canadian Community Health Survey ever to investigate this disease outcome in these populations, I found that immigrants had the highest rates of diabetes consistently across time in comparison with any other subpopulation. So what does this mean to you? 20% of our population are immigrants, and 60% of our growth each year is because of immigrants. And as a child of immigrants, I think their health is pretty important. You see, I hope that my research is able to convince provincial health ministries across the country to be able to reallocate, cut public health funding right back to preventative and remedial care for low socioeconomic diabetics, immigrants, for you and for me. Thank you.